Thank you all for being here for the Welcome to TechSoup. This is the new member orientation and we want to answer your questions. So we'll have Q&A at the end. Um, we are on mute. I'm going to go to the next slide so you can see how you can engage. Somebody has already turned on the closed caption. That means you've been to one of our webinars or you attend webinars. Um, again, you are on mute. So if you have a question, type it in the chat. We have members here that will answer questions in the chat and the Q&A. We're gonna email you the slides um, as soon as possible, probably hopefully later today if uh, everything works right with technology. And there's gonna be a survey that's gonna pop up. It's just two simple questions. We wanna know how we can help you, what webinars you wanna hear about. So if you would answer that, it takes you know less than two minutes to answer that, we would love that. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this over to Nick Finn. He is the head of global marketing here at TechSoup and you guys have a great webinar. Thanks, Nick. Hi, everybody. Uh, thanks for coming today. And uh, again, thank you, Aretha, for being with us today. Aretha, for those of you who didn't hear at the onset, uh, is in Florida. Um, and along with the rest of our um, country fellows in Florida is awaiting the arrival of the hurricane. And so um, uh, for any of you who may be in Florida as well or in the path of that storm, uh, we're thinking of you. And um, thanks for taking the time to be here today. Uh, my name is Nick Finn. I'm the head of global growth marketing at TechSoup. Um, think of it as marketplace communications around all things nonprofit technology. You've met the wonderful Aretha Simons already. I'm also joined by Kevin and Alicia today, also from TechSoup staff, who are going to comment toward the end of this webinar on some different ways that you can engage and interact with TechSoup. Um, today's webinar is really designed to introduce folks who are new to TechSoup to exactly what we are, how we help, what we can do for you, and to provide you with pathways to engage with us, you know. Um, and it starts with the basic question of like, what is TechSoup? Um, for starters, like uh, most of you on this call already, TechSoup is a 501c3 nonprofit organization, right? Um, and so we are not a for-profit tech company. We're not a business. We're a 501c3 nonprofit. Um, our mission is to help other nonprofits and NGOs around the world, not just in the United States, but around the world, um, to use technology to build a more equitable planet. That's a really large, worthy goal um, because we do want to keep our eye on a big North Star, which is that technology should be here to help us make the world a better place to help each other um, and not just for the sake of uh, turning a profit, right? Um, we host a catalog of affordable technology products from major brands like Microsoft, Dell, Intuit, Adobe, and many more. Um, this catalog of offers is available on our website. We'll look at it in a little bit. Um, we're constantly adding new items to it. Uh, we're also constantly taking items that are deprecated or no longer being provided by tech companies out of that catalog. Um, and the idea of the catalog really is that we try to cast a really wide net across um, the technology sector and find all the philanthropic offers available to nonprofits out there that we can and try to get them in that catalog uh, so that it's easier for nonprofits to find offers that could be helpful to them. Um, and that way, it's also easier for tech companies to actually engage with nonprofits and provide these philanthropic offers because we we provide that pathway for the two to talk to each other. Um, we also, over time, have come to really understand that technology products themselves are only part of the equation. Um, very often, once you've acquired technology, there's a whole nother set of issues nonprofits have to deal with around implementing that technology, you know, uh, formatting it, managing it, making sure staff are trained up on it, um, helping nonprofits to actually use that technology because the products are becoming so sophisticated and complicated that it's not enough just to get it. Uh, now you actually, you need to get it, meaning you got to understand it and know how to use it. Um, we also create educational resources to help your nonprofit staff build their general tech skills and expertise. We know that that's something nonprofits have been asking for from TechSoup for decades, so we try to do as much of that as possible. And then, like many of you on this call, we also deliver grant-based programming 
to help civil society use technology. So we have our um, we have our hands in a lot of different areas. Um, like uh, most nonprofits out there, all of us wear many different hats during the day. Um, but the focus of all of it is to serve the nonprofit sector and make sure that they have access to the technology tools and expertise that they need, uh, you know, to move their own mission forward. So I want to talk about a couple of key terms that will matter here. Um, first is the term qualified. So because TechSoup only serves nonprofit organizations, to use the TechSoup catalog and services, you need to become qualified with TechSoup, which means you need to join TechSoup, set up a membership for your nonprofit. And in that process, what you'll do is share with us um, you know, the name of your 501c3, your EIN number, um, and a couple of other details so that we can confirm that you are indeed a valid nonprofit, you know, registered with the IRS as such. And then once you've done that and you've gone through that qualification process, then you're qualified and you can use the TechSoup catalog to acquire technology products for your nonprofit. There's a second layer to this called eligibility. Eligibility is a little more constraining than qualification. Qualification means you can use the catalog. Some items in the catalog are a little more constrained based on maybe the mission of the nonprofit or your budget size, sometimes even physical location. Um, eligibility is whether or not you are eligible to get a specific product in that catalog. And they, we'll, we'll talk more about that as we get into it more deeply. You heard me in the prior slide mention civil society. Not everybody knows exactly what I mean or what TechSoup means when we talk about that, but we're really talking about is the global community of change makers and do-gooders around the world who are working in nonprofits or NGOs and charities and other non-governmental, non-business organizations, right? So we're not the government and we're not a private business or corporation. We're something different. We are civil society. We are the organizations working to make the world a better place. Um, digital transformation is another term you'll hear bandied about in the nonprofit technology arena. Uh, what that really means is embracing digital technology as a way to build a stronger nonprofit that's more resilient, that can deliver more programming to more people, um, to help you scale your impact and do more of whatever it is that your specific mission is in the world. Finally, there's this notion of digital resilience, right? Digital resilience really means ensuring that your nonprofit and its technology stack can quickly respond, adapt, and continue to serve during an external disruption or crisis. And so we just mentioned how there's this crazy storm hitting the United States along the coast there in Florida. That's a great example of the kind of disruptions and, you know, in the era of climate change, we expect more and more of these kinds of things to happen. Um, that's the kind of disruption that digital technology can help your nonprofit be resilient in the face of. Because even if a physical office becomes inaccessible or damaged somehow through water or fire or something like that, digital technology that uses the cloud to store your nonprofit's data to enable communications between your staff. That would allow your nonprofit to exist even when your office itself may no longer be a usable physical location. So let's talk about the TechSoup catalog, which I previewed a little bit ago. And we're gonna go to the live site right now. And I just wanna make sure that folks are now seeing the live site. Maybe Alicia, give me a thumbs up if you are seeing the live site, great. So this is the live TechSoup site. You can see the sliders at the top of the page that are moving across, highlighting specific things for this week. I wanna start though by pointing you to where is the product catalog. You can get to it up here in the navigation or from the homepage, you can also click this browse catalog button which I'm gonna do right here. It'll take a second to load and then we will get the TechSoup catalog up on the screen. Okay, so here's the TechSoup catalog. And um, it is, first of all, a page of highlighted offers. Um, and then 
you can go to the left here. You can look at different brands that you might be interested in working with or you know have an offer that would be of interest to you. You can also browse by category, so different areas of functionality in your nonprofit that might need help. And then I also want to call out that we do have a specific section in that catalog for hardware. And we're going to talk more about hardware in a minute. So let's talk about one of the biggest brands in that catalog, which is Microsoft. Uh, Microsoft has been an early and long partner of TechSoup and really encouraged TechSoup in its early days to dream big about what we could really do to support nonprofits in the field. Um, back in those days, when TechSoup was originally founded like 30 years ago, part of the job then was to take these extra CD-ROMs of Microsoft Office, like the physical CD-ROM that you used to get to load that on a computer, and to distribute those licenses and CD-ROMs to local nonprofits in the Bay Area. That was sort of the beginning of TechSoup. And of course, the world has moved on a whole lot since then. Now, you don't get software that way. It's all downloaded from the cloud through the internet. Um, and so what our Microsoft offers today really consist of is a focus on Microsoft Cloud products. And really, we're talking about Microsoft 365, um, and Office 365, and also Windows. Um, those are all available through TechSoup, and TechSoup also has add-on services with that to help you with the implementation, installation, and management of these Microsoft products. Another big brand in the TechSoup catalog is Adobe. Um, Adobe uh, provides mainly tools for communicators, but there is also some operational stuff in there. Um, the first big Adobe product that many folks probably think of, particularly if you're in the space of being a nonprofit communicator or a designer, writer, something like that, is Adobe Creative Cloud. Um, Creative Cloud contains applications uh, like um, Photoshop, Illustrator, um, InDesign, Dreamweaver. These are all digital asset creation uh, platforms. They require a little bit of expertise to use, though. I'm not going to lie about that. And so designers often find that, you know, they are the people who really have to know how that kind of product works, web designers with Dreamweaver in particular. Um, so for lots of folks who don't have the expertise on Adobe Creative Cloud, there's another product that has really come into the forefront, Adobe Express, um, which is more of a one-stop shop, easier to use, templated and AI functionality all in one place where you can kind of create social media graphics and things like that easily. Um, the third area that Adobe really helps nonprofits is with PDFs, portable document format. It's a technology that Adobe really created themselves. Everybody on this call has had to manage PDFs at some point in time. We all know the deal when we wanted to combine two PDFs or edit a page or extract a page entirely. Suddenly we find that the free PDF viewer we've been using online doesn't allow us to do that. So instead, um, Adobe has in our catalog a few different offers, including one that is going away soon that I want to highlight right now, and that is Adobe Acrobat Pro 2020. Um, Adobe Acrobat Pro 2020 is what's called an on-premises product. That means that rather than being a cloud product that's continuously updated through the cloud for life, it's downloaded to your computer locally. There's a small set of updates you get over a limited period of time, and then at a certain point in time, that software no longer works. The benefit to it can be if, for instance, you have a computer that doesn't need to be hooked up to the internet, you want to use it on there, it's easier to use that way. Um, but moving forward, after the end of November, beginning December 1st, Adobe Acrobat 2020 on-premises will not be available through TechSoup. Um, so I'm just highlighting that for folks right now. Another very popular product in the TechSoup catalog is Intuit QuickBooks, a great way for nonprofits to be organizing their finances. Um, you know, we have nonprofit pricing available for these QuickBooks products in the catalog. Uh, again, the pandemic actually was a great reminder of how old fashioned paper and pencil accounting systems just do not cut it in the modern world. Um, when people could not be in the same space in an office together, 
you couldn't manage the books. That's why you need to have some kind of cloud-based financial backbone for your nonprofit. And QuickBooks really has proven to be like at the forefront of that for nonprofits. There are a lot of other brands in the TechSoup catalog, um, and this is just a sampling of some of them. Um, but I highlight them here because really what I want to encourage you to do after this webinar is to go in and look at the products available in the TechSoup catalog. Um, and don't just think it's just Adobe, Microsoft, and Intuit. There's a whole lot more going on there and worth taking your time to take a look at it. Right, so moving on to the next topic, hardware. Yeah, so as I promised, um, TechSoup does have in its catalog hardware going again to the live site here. Um, and we maintain relationships. Uh-oh. Looks like we have lost a pathway on the site there. So let me just go back to the slideshow. We've maintained relationships with Dell, with Lenovo, with HP, and other technology uh, providers, hardware providers. And we provide special offers to nonprofits through the TechSoup catalog. One of the ones that I think is really worth highlighting is called refurbished hardware. You, you, I'm sure you've heard the term before, but um, TechSoup was actually one of the original leaders in the notion that we should be not throwing away hardware instantly once we feel it's one or two years out of date and we want the brand new shiny thing. Um, instead, much of the hardware can be refurbished, wiped clean of information, and then reused. Um, so laptops and desktop computers in particular, and more and more mobile devices as well, frankly, are another part of the growing uh, universe of refurbished hardware. Um, today, in the modern technology marketplace, you can see there are lots of providers of refurbished hardware out there, but TechSoup still provides it also. And as I say, we were one of the uh, leaders on why that was a good idea, and why it was a green idea to do that. And this, to me, speaks to one of the great things about working in a nonprofit versus a for-profit, where in a nonprofit, you're not always just incentivized by the amount of money you can make, right? That's not what nonprofit work is really about. We think about other things as well. It's not that we don't need revenue to operate, because what organization doesn't? But we also get to think about things like, what's the human impact of things that we do? What's the environmental impact of things that we do? And so it's from that different framework that things like the refurbished hardware offers can really emerge. And you know, it's just a great example of why nonprofit work is, is necessary and different than for-profit work. So again, to get to that hardware section, you can click on the product catalog, assuming they've got the, uh, the navigation fixed. I don't know what's going on with it today. Um, and that will uh, get you right there and you can take a look. There's a whole lot more than just those offers that I talked about in the hardware area. Um, another area that we discussed briefly on the front end here was the need for TechSoup services. Because as I said, it's not enough to acquire a technology product. Um, more and more nonprofits actually need help adopting that product, implementing it, configuring it correctly, managing it over the long term, training staff to use it properly, making sure it's secure. Um, these are all service offers that TechSoup is building and has built up over time. And I want to talk a little bit about what some of those are. So right here next to the product catalog in the nav, there is a digital assessment tool, help desk, Office 365, managed IT, website services, digital marketing, courses, boost and consultant connection. So we're gonna to touch on some of these things briefly here. Um, let's see if I can, let's see if this one works too. Yeah, here we go. So, um, there's an overview page which gives us a great view of some of the specific websites that nonprofits are really oriented around with TechSoup. Um, one of the biggest areas, of course, is websites. You know, 30 years ago when nonprofits were operating, your website was a dream if you even thought to have it. Um, Today, it's absolutely necessary, and it's the primary communication channel for most nonprofits with their audience, whether that audience is the public or some other smaller segment. Um, improving your website is a constant struggle 
for nonprofits. I, I have yet to meet any nonprofit leader who feels that their website is absolutely great just as it is and doesn't need anything. Everybody's always constantly trying to improve it. And TechSoup has definitely um, implemented services to help you build your website or improve it. I want to emphasize these are not free, right? It costs money to do these things. But I think that you would find going through the TechSoup catalog, it would cost you less money and you would find expertise here uh, with folks who are used to working with nonprofits and understand a nonprofit's mission. And that's, as I said, very different than what a for-profit business mission is. Um, IT support is another service that we provide through something called managed IT. Managed IT is sort of a, a big picture, longer term relationship with TechSoup where we can really help you manage the entire technology stack of your nonprofit. I mentioned Intuit QuickBooks earlier. We have a service where we can help you migrate your books to QuickBooks Online. Um, and then a whole lot of other things, cybersecurity training for your staff, more and more important almost every single day as the uh, number of bad actors out there and their ability to compromise systems increases, right? We have to make sure that nonprofits stay secure. Um, some nonprofits really need to have a marketing strategy because they really do work with the public and need to communicate with them more broadly about their mission or specific uh, initiatives taking place. But they may not be used to actually having to engage in a marketing function. We can help a nonprofit develop that marketing function. If you're using Google Ad Grants and you want to really maximize your use of Google Ad Grants, we have a service available for that. Um, a couple of years ago, when Google Analytics was launching the move from Universal Analytics to GA4, we launched a new service to help nonprofits implement Google Analytics on their site. TechSoup is a HubSpot user ourselves for outbound marketing. Um, lots of other nonprofits also use HubSpot. If you need help setting it up, that is a service you can get through TechSoup. Sometimes there are specialized pieces of software that need installation expertise, and you may not feel that you've got it in-house in your nonprofit. We also have a service to help with general software installations. A couple of services here to call out on Microsoft, installing Windows, uh, uh, migrating to Microsoft 365, setting up Salesforce. Um, and then there are another 20 or 30 services on top of these that are also available. Again, what I recommend is taking a look in your own time after the webinar to see what it is that you might necessarily need. Now, one thing I wanna highlight is that TechSoup has just launched a more comprehensive set of membership levels. TechSoup Boost is one of them, but in fact, what I'm gonna do is jump over to our membership page, right? As I said on the front end, if you're a nonprofit and you want to use the TechSoup catalog or services, you need to join TechSoup and create a TechSoup membership. Um, and uh, this is the page that really discusses that. Um, but I want to highlight the three membership plans that we have and just differentiate between them. So we have three levels of membership, DIY, Boost, and Quad. DIY is a, serve, is a membership level that costs you no money in terms of the membership itself. It provides you with access to the TechSoup catalog um, and you know some webinars, for instance, like the one that we're on today, and access to the TechSoup blog. Um, it's really ideal for nonprofits and people who know what they're looking for, know what they want. They just want access to the catalog, and then they're going to move on and DIY it, do it themselves, do it yourself, right? But we also know a lot of people want more help than that. So we have a second level for $99 a year, not a month, $99 a year. Um, your nonprofit can join TechSoup Boost. And what Boost does is, of course, give you access to the catalog like we've just discussed in the DIY level. But Boost also gives you the possibility of researching and understanding better what the options are out there for you. So, for instance, 
if you are in the market for a CRM, customer relationship management database, right? And you don't even know where to start. You know, you need a CRM, but which one and what are the options and what are the costs? Boost is the space where you would get help on figuring that out, right? DIY would be, I know which CRM I need. It's in the TechSoup catalog. I'm just going to go get it. Boost is, I need help figuring out which one I even need. The third level of membership is called Quad. Quad is $200 a year for a nonprofit, but it is our deepest dive into technology expertise, right? It is the place where you would get real engagement from the nonprofit community, including other nonprofits who may be working on a similar mission to yours. So it's community, community, peer to peer. You'll also get to engage with TechSoup staff who have some real technical expertise around particular issues that you might need help on. Um, and of course, that quad membership also includes the content from Boost and the catalog access contained in DIY. So those are the three levels of membership at TechSoup. Um, and if you have not signed up with TechSoup yet, that's the process you would want to go through to check out that membership. Now, um, I've gone through these. Sorry, I'm just bumping through here. Um, Consultant Connection is another quick service to highlight here, by the way. Um, it's in that services menu. It's fairly new, but Consultant Connection is a service where we try to connect nonprofits with particular consultants that who, who can specialize in a particular need that that nonprofit has. Um, okay, well... I have the wrong name on the slide, but next I want to bring up Alicia, my colleague here at TechSoup, who's going to talk a little bit about TechSoup customer service. Um, what this really is, is how you can engage with TechSoup, with live human beings, um, to manage your TechSoup account. And I want to be really clear about something. Managing your TechSoup account is not troubleshooting into it QuickBooks or configuring Microsoft Office or doing anything with technology products that you have acquired. Ma the customer support group here is to help you manage your relationship with TechSoup itself. There's a different group that Kevin Mulhall is going to talk up to in a couple of minutes that will help you with the more technical end. Um, but first, uh, let's bring Alicia forward. And Alicia, take it away. Thanks, Nick. Hi, everybody. I am Alicia, and I work on the client services team at TechSoup as one of their senior leads. Um, so if you contact TechSoup for, like Nick said, help with your TechSoup account specifically and managing your actual, like your qualification process or any of the information on your account, you will go to our team, the customer or the client services team. And what we'd like to point out is the kind of the self-service options that come before you can con uh, connect with TechSoup um, via chat, which we'll get into a little bit later. Um, and so this highlighted page that you see here, this is what we call an offer page. So if you go through the catalog that Nick just kind of pointed out and you find something that you like and you go to their offer page, for instance, QuickBooks Online Plus, one year subscription, five users, um, there is a lot of information that you can find on this page uh, that is sometimes not really obvious. So the big bar on the bottom that is um, long and rectangular, that is the three tabs that exist on all of the offer pages. The first one that is highlighted on this picture is the description. This will give you an overview of what you're looking at, of what the actual software does. The second tab is the subscription details. Um, this is the tab that has more of the deeper dive information about what is actually offered, what it looks like, and how to get it. Um, the So the if you have something that says access to discounted rates, that means you're going to pay a TechSoup admin fee, but you're also going to pay a discounted rate directly to whoever provides the offer. Um, and you would find those details in that second tab there, the subscription details. And the last tab is the rules, eligibility, and restrictions. Um, so Kevin actually put in the eligibility quiz into the chat box. This is something that your organization can go through um, after you're qualified, and it'll show you which offers your organization is eligible for. Um, there really isn't any 
specific organization that is going to be eligible for every single offer. Um, but a lot of them will be eligible for different offers. So if you come across um, a product that your organization is interested in, you go through the process to check out that product and you get um, kind of a banner that says your organization isn't eligible for this product, you're going to find the eligibility criteria in this last tab, the rules, eligibility, and restrictions. Um, and again, it looks like Kevin just posted that quiz in the chat again. Um, and then the box on top, the smaller rectangle, um, that is kind of the offer details. So you've got the donor partner, in this case, Intuit. Um, and those are also hyperlinks. So if you click on the name, it's going to take you to the Intuit offer page. Um, the category, accounting, accounting and cloud computing. Again, hyperlinks that will take you to those specific pages in the TechSoup catalog. Um, and then the platform, the format, uh, the product ID, which is sometimes important, um, but generally it's just kind of cataloging. Um, and then the availability. And this one says limited availability. That just means that sometimes we'll, so we get basically a batch of codes from each different um, provider and we will run out of those. So we have kind of a set amount that we get throughout the fiscal year. Um, so if you see something on the TechSoup product catalog and it says um, out of stock and there's kind of this idea of how can a cloud offer be out of stock? Um, well, it's because we only get a few of these actual licenses to provide. So this one says limited availability, but generally if they're not available, it'll say out of stock. Um, they're available, it will say available. And then the admin fee in red. So the QuickBooks Online Plus offer specifically is an admin fee of $80 per year. There's no access to discounted rates um, that you would find the details for in the subscription details tab. This offer is just kind of what it is on the front here. Um, and you can kind of see how we format all of these offer pages. Um, and then the add to cart with on the side, some folks I've I've talked to folks who get um, kind of confused about that. Those are just extra offers. They don't really have anything to do with the offer specifically that the page is for. So it's just some, it's just um, things that you can get in addition to. Great, right, next slide, thank you. And this is kind of just going into more details of that subscription details tab. Um, again, it's maybe not the most important one, but in my opinion, it does have a lot of information that, that our team would be giving you if you were to come to us um, for general questions. A lot of those general questions that people have, they, it can be answered from this page here. You can see the different, um, the different categories on the side, system requirements, subscription limits, start date, and continuing service after one year. So for something like the QuickBooks Online offer, mm -hmm. um, you do have to continue the subscription each year. And that means paying the admin fee every year of $80. And it'll tell you a little bit about, you know, you get reminders 30, 15, and five days before the subscription is set to renew or expire. Um, and those details are also found in this really informative description detail, subscription details page. Thank you. And so we're also in an effort to kind of meet the needs of the people coming to TechSoup. We are going through an ongoing project to really update our frequently asked questions and our um, support resources at TechSoup. And so you can see the big red arrow on the right here, right next to the login button, there's a help button. And if you push that, this is going to give you access to some of our renewed resources that we've been really working hard on. And so there are several different options. Um, obviously, if you're brand new, the best way to start, the best place to start is to go to that help and then getting started. That's going to give you a lot of information, a lot of resources, and kind of a good bird's eye view overview of what TechSoup can offer for you. And then there's, you know, you can go as deep into that as you like. Um, and then, so it's also categorized by, so you've got the rules and eligibility, account access and management, uh, donation availability, Microsoft support. We've been <laughs> really working on that one and I'm pretty proud of it um, since Microsoft is such is one of the bigger donors that we have. It's a really a driver for people to come to TechSoup. And it's um, sometimes it's a little bit complicated um, or convoluted, I should say. Microsoft is um, 
there's a lot of parameters for their charity program. And so you can find a lot of your Microsoft questions can be answered by this Microsoft support article uh, link. And that's not just one article, it's going to have several different um, sub articles after that. I think the next slide actually goes into more of that. Does it? Or maybe not on the next slide, but that's okay. Um, so the the help section of the TechSoup website is um, very helpful, it's in the name. And that's going to be kind of the first place you want to go before you contact our team. Um, and some of the resources that we give you are going to be direct links to these articles and to these support articles that we have in there. Um, just because there's, sometimes there's a lot of information to give to you over chat. Um, and it's really, it's nice to be able to kind of peruse at your own speed. Um, and then if you have more detailed questions about what's in those articles, then you can come to us and say, hey, I'm reading this. What does this actually mean? Can you help guide me through it? Um, and so it's kind of what TechSoup can do for you, what we can assist you with in our customer service department specifically um, is your account management. That's things like um, changing your information, updating your address or your email address that you have as your main contact on your page. Um, who's, on, who's on your TechSoup account? Who is your valid your validated representatives? If you want to update those that information or your login information, um, we can definitely help you with all of those things. Um, with your eligibility questions, say you know you want to get an offer and you look at the eligibility restrictions page on the offer page, and you're thinking, well, I think that my organization fits into this. I don't know how that's actually the designation is actually falling for my organization. So you can come to us and we can help you clarify anything that might be a little nebulous in the wording. Um, and then navigating the resources um, and requesting products on TechSoup.org. Sometimes, um, like you just saw with Nick going to the hardware catalog, um, a connection was broken. And so we can help you if you come into anything like that or you can't make a payment for, your, um, for the request that you made or something is happening, you can't verify your email address. We can definitely help you with those troubleshooting steps. Um, and things that we really can't assist with is the in-depth IT support. Um, our team, we don't really have any um, licensed IT professionals, so we can't comfortably and confidently walk anybody through their IT support needs. Um, the kind of download installation or troubleshooting of the actual products that you get here, say like, you know, oh, I, my <laughs> Autodesk account has something going on. Can you help me? Um, we basically, we can provide the offers, but our TechSoup staff, we don't have any access to these actual platforms that these softwares are hosted on. So we can't really go into their accounts and say, hey, this is what's going on. But we can give you resources about how to contact folks that will be able to help you. Um, and these are reps that are kind of, act, they're actually at the donor partners or the corporate partners um, companies. And then the product functionality questions. Um, we, so on our offer pages, we have a lot of information there and links to the actual products. But when it comes to, you know, will my software integrate with this kind of software and can it happen seamlessly? A lot of those things we don't really know. And that would have to be, um, kind of taken up again with the corporate partners support directly. Okay, and so this, how do I contact customer service? Well, so all of the support at TechSoup is now live chat. And when you navigate to the live chat options, which um, I think we have another slide in here coming up that's gonna show you where you can find the little help button. It's going to be pretty much, as long as you're logged into your TechSoup account and you have to accept the cookies. Um, so every time you log in, if you're refreshing your browser, it'll say, um, oh, accept cookies, this is what we do. Um, do accept all. And as long as you've done that, then you will see this little um, help bubble at the bottom of every single page. And it'll when you click it, you can see kind of on the right hand picture where there is um, there's the chat bot is going to ask you some questions um, about what you need, wh where you've gone, um, how can I help you today kind of thing. And that's really the only automated aspect of the chat that you're going to get. And that's going to help kind of filter people into our actual live agents. Um, so when you go into click that get in touch button, you're definitely going to get an actual person who is here at TechSoup um, working with you. It's not going to be an automated 
AI chatbot um, after the initial clicking on the help, going through the, reading the little links that we have on there. But then after that, like I said, we will definitely be, there will be a person on the other end to talk to you. Sometimes it takes a little bit of time. Um, there are sometimes uh, wait times for chat, but there will be somebody there to help. All right. Um, in a minute now, well, first of all, thank you, Alicia. Uh, we're going to have Kevin come up and talk for a minute. But before we do, I just want to flag, Larry, I'm seeing your comment in chat here about the length of time for qualification. Um, quick insider tip here. Uh, if you log in and then actually place the item in the cart that you are interested in, it will prioritize your qualification in the queue. Um, it can take a couple of weeks sometimes for the full qualification review to happen um, because we have a lot of nonprofits coming in all the time and it's a fairly manual process actually. Um, anyway, so if you've not already placed that item in the cart that you're interested in, I'd encourage you to do that. It will accelerate your qualification process. Um, Kevin. Uh, Kevin Mulhall is another great colleague here at TechSoup. Um, Kevin has tons of technical knowledge about lots of different technology platforms that nonprofits uh, lean on. Kevin's team is the group that can help you answer those tech questions versus the account questions that Alicia can, uh, can answer with her group. So Kevin, take it away. Oh, great. Can you guys hear me? Thumbs up. Okay, great. Um, yep. So Kevin Mahal, I'm a senior account executive on the customer success team. Basically what Nick said, um, and Alicia's kind of uh, foreshadowed to uh, our team, um, which is relatively new in terms of um, TechSoup's uh, lifespan, um, specifically deals with those types of uh, inquiries around um, the products that are in our catalog, um, as well as uh, those that may not necessarily be in our catalog. Um, here, here on the slide here um, is a list of some of the value-added services that we provide. Um, to go back to uh, earlier discussion, um, where does this engagement occur in these types of value-added services? Um, as you saw in the membership model, um, moving from DIY to um, to the quad membership, um, where we typically step in um, on the majority of these services is as an extension to uh, those that are a part of quad, um, but also those that are in the purchasing process. Um, and that kind of leads into, um, as somebody who started out in account management, um, where it would be a benefit for somebody to engage with us. Um, so before you get to the question of like, how do I download XYZ? does this product integrate or how do I execute this integration? Where do I get the, like, um, for example, an API key, et cetera. You don't need to obviously know what any of these things are, but really the best thing to do before you purchase a product, like you would if you were going to Target or to anywhere else, is to have a conversation about it. And that's actually where our team shines. Um, we understand how the products work uh, to varying degrees, our team is certified on a variety of them. Um, it's really where 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 it it really is impactful um, is is part of that experience of onboarding a product. The organizations tend to not necessarily think in that way, uh, whereas we do. We look at the customer journey as the pre-adoption, adoption, and onboarding phase. Now, to make sense of this, we are not a fully managed service provider. We don't have the bandwidth. Um, and in some instances, um, the skill set that's necessary to get to that highest level of um, integration, uh, support, setup support, it's just something that we don't have. Um, we have partners for that, which were mentioned um, in the Consultant Connection. We also have preferred uh, providing partners. Um, so really, that's essentially what, where and how the customer success team um, fits into the mold. Um, again, the frontline folks, um, they're there to provide that general support. We are there as more of um, an advanced type of support. Uh, and again, we'd like to be thought of um, as advisors. Um, but in our case, um, um, I, I, I like the term we started to throw around recently as the unconsultants. We are here to advocate for you. We are not here to upsell you. Um, 
Um, one of the big things that um, we've been doing recently this year is particularly uh, on, that's on the slide, the tech audit piece. Um, so that's how we're accessed. Um, I'm going to throw my contact in the chat and then I'll can I kick it back to you, Nick. Great. Thanks, Kevin. Um, well, with that, we've reached the end of our um, quick discussion here around TechSoup. Uh, I know it probably feels like we've just dumped a lot of knowledge and thinking on you here uh, about what TechSoup is and what we try to do. Um, I think at the high level now, drawing back in terms of what I'd like you to take away from today's session with, is that TechSoup's mission is to support you using technology. And we execute that mission through the lens of being a nonprofit ourselves. We are here to help you. We are not here to just make money in technology like a technology corporation, right? Um, so if you have needs, especially if you have some specific things that you are working on at your nonprofit that really requires technology support, I want to really encourage you to start with TechSoup on that journey and think about what it is that we can uh, provide you, what it is that you need. Um, uh, but before you can do any of those things, you do need to sign up with TechSoup and become a member. So if you're not already one, please do join TechSoup. And if you have joined TechSoup and, uh, you know, like Larry here, waiting to hear back that you are approved, be patient. Uh, we'll be there soon. Um, and uh, as Aretha said at the top, we will be sharing with you a deck of these slides after the webinar is over. There are live links in that deck. You can follow those to some of the products and services we discussed. But really, TechSoup.org is where you want to start more than the slideshow. Go to the site, see what's on there that's of interest to you. Uh, and I hope that we can help support you in whatever your mission is. Um, one of the great parts of working at TechSoup is we're constantly asking nonprofits, like, send us your mission statement. Help us understand what it is that you do. We have thousands of these. And it's amazing to see the broad scope of what nonprofit work looks like in the United States. And it covers every single gambit out there. So to all of you who've made the decision to work in the nonprofit sector at the moment, um, to help make your communities better or serve people in some way, uh, I want to thank you for your work. Um, and I hope TechSoup can help. Um, thanks for stopping by today. We appreciate your time and attention. And watch out for an email with those slides. Have a great rest of your day. Okay.